you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Woo! Wait, Virgil, anything different that you guys are doing this close to the fight? No, just eat more. <laughs> Drink more. You know, makes them happy, you know? Is it literally as simple as that, Virgil? It's just eat and drink more. You're not doing anything different because of the weight. No, it, no matter what you do for the weight, you're not going to be able to compete with the weight. I'm not. I would be foolish to compete with the weight. Yeah. Because no matter what I do, I can weight lift and stuff him and everything. He's not going to be able to compete with the weight. So we have to work to our strengths. So the weight is, that would have been foolish to try to come up with weight and too much weight. I'm just letting him weigh what he normally weighs. Because of that and the speed issue and everything, does that mean in theory he's going to come in as light as possible as he reasonably can and fight like that? You mean I'm here? Yeah. I, I expect him to be 60, 61. You know, one thing he can do is stuff himself, kind of match weight, you know. So, look, uh, a middleweight can knock out a heavyweight. You know, he's not a true middleweight. But if you stop and think about it, neither is Canelo. He came through the weight classes also. He started out, I believe, at 140, 147. I mean, you know. So it's not like he came into the game a middleweight, you know. But I understand he was um, amateur and, you know, and he came through a young kid fighting like Amir, but Amir came through weight class also and just at some point he got a little heavier you know but he didn't he wasn't a six foot five eleven kid and amateurs like uh, Andre Ward fighting 160 and 165 and stayed there for 10 years you you have to settle into that weight to be a true middle hey, hey Virgil sorry um, yeah your fighter um, Amir Khan he said he believes he's stronger than Miguel Cotto you agree with that or, or what uh, in the ring, as far as his movements is concerned, um, as far as fighting on the move, it's quite possible. As far as sitting down and planning a punch in, um, it's debatable. And the reason why is because Amir is, doesn't have that type of killer instinct that Miguel Cotto has, you see. If he, would, if he had a, that type of killer instinct, then I think we could really know uh, if his punch was in comparison with it. But I'll tell you this much, uh, his left hook to the liver, I'll match it with anybody. The one he put Madonna down where he can hit to the body with it underneath. He can really hit to the body. And he's got a buggy whip effect to his punches, so it's a snap. So if he hits you, you don't see it, he can do some damage now. Galazzo found it out, so he can, if he gets it right at the right time. Perfect. A lot of the speed behind it. A lot of fans have really criticized um, Khan's performance against Chris Algieri, and they basically said if he struggled against Chris Algieri, you know, how's he going to have a chance against Canelo? What do you say about that? Well, you know, I never got into business for the fans because I would be seeking the wrong approval. So, if you do have fights that differ out to make it appear that it was a difficult fight. Actually, it's one of my best, his best fights to me for the simple reason he did not do what he was supposed to do the week of the fight. And I warned him. He didn't think it was going to be a difficult fight. And I warned him, and I warned him, and I warned him. And it's obvious he didn't listen. He caught a bad cold Wednesday. I never said it. So, and I told him Algeria had his mind made up. He was going to win. And when a man's got his mind made up, he's going to win. You're going to have a tough fight until you convince him he can't win. So, but it was the last four rounds. When he realized he was in a tough fight, he showed me his competitiveness, you see. And it was Algeria who wore down once we got around the ninth and the tenth, and he, you know, crossed the finish line. So that showed me something else about it, too, Virgil, that he's competitive. Virgil, is, is Canelo's power overrated, being that he's only knocked out uh, James Kirkland, too? Will he stand in there for that fifth and sixth punch combination? Will he stay on his bicycle? I'm sorry. I I don't, yeah, I don't advise him to stay in there and just trade punches with uh, Canelo. Listen, you know, I give him the benefit of the doubt that he can punch. Um, but if I had to compare him with what I consider true punchers, I'd say he falls a little bit underneath. 
because um, he hit Alfredo Angulo with every punch invented, and then some. And Alfredo never stopped going forward. You know, and then the next guy, Jay La Hoya, De La Rosa, hit him one time and knocked him down. So, um, and Alfredo was a dead man in that fight. Trust me, I know. If I hadn't been in the bathroom in the morning away, and he wouldn't even, that fight wouldn't even happen because he fainted. Okay, but then I caught him. He was so, you know, he just didn't do what he was supposed to do. But, I mean, the record speaks for itself. So I don't even think I have to, you know, get too deep into it. He only knocked out one 154 pounder. Um, he's nowhere near out, nowhere near stopping uh, Cotto, nowhere near stopping Laura, nowhere near stopping, um, what's the other 50, not the other 54? Um, Trout. Trout. Yeah. So, Maybe it was their skills, you know, maybe it was. So how would you not have him not having the killer instinct? Um, how much better a fight would it be if he had that killer instinct? And um, is there a chance we might see that in this fight? No, you can't call a killer instinct. That's, that has to be you. You know, that's, that has to be in you a long time ago, you know. When you first come, you see kids come in the gym and they want to hurt somebody right away, you know. That's a killer instinct. You know, they get beat up and they right back the next day. See, with a vengeance, like, I'm going to get you. You know, I've seen that, right? So, uh, that's, that's a, some, a trait. But he has competitiveness. So, competitiveness done right, can, you know, you can sort of put them in the same class, you know, but um, no, I don't advise him to trade punches with him because he's given up too much size. How much better would he be if he had that case? Hard to say. I can only deal with him from the time he connected up to this point, so it's just hard to say. First, we talk about his size a lot, and a lot of people think he might lose speed. Have you noticed any lack of speed, or is the speed still there from what you can see? Because a lot of people were concerned when they saw his bicep being so big. No, he has not lost any speed. Um, he's a big kid, bigger than most people realize. So he has not lost any speed. He didn't do anything for his bicep. No weights, no nothing like that. That was, I believe, a Photoshop or something that people were showing. But you see, he doesn't even look like he's 60. You know? No, I mean, look, look the, the pneumatic training, the pneumatic equipment that I have at the gym is not weights. It's pneumatic. So it's isokinetic, isokinetic, um, isometric more or less work for stamina, for endurance, muscular endurance. So it's not for size. So if you condition a guy and he's able to eat what he wants, right? And not have to cut, 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 it'll look nice. So, you know, it, nothing drastic was done. Hi, you're, you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Woo! <laughs> hey. <Yeah. laughs>